Hey, it's Foray, and welcome back to Is It Still Scary? Today we're looking at Sanitarium. I love this game. It was produced by Dreamforce Entertainment, developed by Dreamforce Entertainment, and published by ASC Games. I'm not sure. Yeah, let's look at the front cover first. Uh, it's the eye of the main character, called Max, with the bandages. He wears most of the game. The entire game, I must say. And it has some quotes from magazines, I think. Next Generation and PC Gamer. Okay, well, it's a really nice cover. Let's have a look at the back. On the back we have some screenshots of the game. Some screenshots of the um, cutscenes. Which I think are a bit misleading because... Uh, you might think this is the whole game. But there are some screenshots of the actual game. And I didn't own the the, car, the box, so I didn't, never had a chance to read all this. I didn't even read it before I started the playthrough. But it says, A journey through the depths of one man's consciousness to confront the demons from his past and escape the imprisonment of his mind. I think this takes a bit away from the mystery, because I, I had no idea what was happening throughout the game. I think I said in the first or in the second uh, part that I thought he was either dead or in coma. But apparently he's just trapped in his mind. I thought it was really cool that the logos in the intro are custom made for this game. You can see Max in a padded cell and then the logo takes uh, the bandages from his face and puts it all over the logo. I think that's really cool. In the intro we see a character walking, getting into a car, and then getting off the rails and crashing. And then we get a weird sequence with some voices saying that a reactor is going to blow and we wake up in an asylum. In this asylum we talk to some weird characters and we finally manage to escape by sliding down a power cable with a towel. We then have to fix a VCR, and if we do, we get treated to a cutscene. In this cutscene, we see Max sitting at a table, across from some doctors. This is Dr. Morgan, I think. We chase him to throughout the rest of the game. Um, we get a slight insight of what's happening, because Max supposedly stole a car, crashed it, and ended up with bandages on his face. And back at the asylum, he started. We fi also find a key, and if we place this key in the base of the statue of the, with the angel, the angel springs alive and starts talking to us. I do seek the truth I think this is a metaphor for something uh, that's happening in Max's life but we'll find out later we are then transported to a village with all these deformed children and we have to rescue them so once we approach the graveyard we get treated to another cutscene this cutscene Talks about unexplained children deaths and is asking if anyone can save them. In the cemetery we find some more kids and one of the kids challenges us to a game of hide and seek. If we accept, we have to find some children that are scattered around the village. One is hiding in a barrel, the other is hiding in a church. And we get a strange cutscene when we enter. And the last one is really hard to find because you have to find a shovel and dig up a grave because that's their secret weapon a dead girl 
which you're never supposed to find. All these children talk about mother, an entity that's taking care of them, but also deforming them. We find a girl in a pumpkin patch, and she and we have to open a gate and go through this pumpkin patch and battle some scarecrows. Then we finally meet Mother. She's a kind of plant monster alien thing. And she wants to transform the children, save them even, by transforming them into creatures like herself. We have to combine some items, which are pretty hard to find, and place them in the comet the mother came down on, and then electrify the, ma the comet to uh, kill her. Once, once you do, the girl from the pumpkin patch opens a portal, and you get transported to the next level. The next level or chapter is called the courtyard and the chapel and it takes place in a courtyard of some sane asylum again and there are, is a chapel there which is run by one of the what you would call them patients and we have to give him a room I think to progress but we first have to fix the fountain that's in the middle of the courtyard and then we get another cutscene of a Max when he was little and his dying sister. We then go to the next chapter and we're suddenly our little sister Sarah. She's at the Circus of Fools which is basically a big circuit stand on an island because some flood came in and killed everyone except the circus people. If we approach the fire breeder in the circus tent, we get another flashback. And I think this is Max getting married. So the fire lady, fire breeding lady is a representation of his wife or something. After doing some more stuff, we end up at the fun house. And in this fun house, there's this laughing mirror. Is that what it's called? It's called a laughing mirror in Dutch. Where we see... Max in the reflection while being Sarah, but that's a bit creepy. At the end of this level, we have to set free Timber, I think he's called. He's some kind of dog person, and he leads us to a cave with bones and immediately gets eaten by the squid monster that lives there. We then have to fight the squid monster in the cave and end up at the mansion. And the mansion is really interesting because we encounter a lot of ghosts that are Max's family. When I think Sarah was still alive. And we get some more insight in what happened to her. In this chapter there's another cutscene of Sarah when she was still alive. It's recording on a VCR that the dad watches. And it's about her hiding the key we need to get uh, out of this level. At the end of this level we find Sarah in her bed. Well, go Sarah. And she recognizes us as being Max. And we get transformed into Max. And this happens. I thought... I thought I let you down when you needed me most. No, don't think that. You could never let me down. You're my hero. He hero? You're trying to save all those kids. I know you can do it. I love you. The next chapter is called The Laboratory. And we're in a laboratory this time. Uh, we arrive at this bed that strangely looks like Sarah's one and there's a cutscene in this one that sheds some light on the relationship between Morgan and Max. After some more puzzles we get another cutscene. This time it's about Max doing some uh, research and Morgan helping him out. At the end of this level we get yet another cutscene. This one is about Morgan and he has some clones and he catches us and gives us an injection which makes us turn into a comic book hero which I think is really strange. So in the next chapter which is called The Hive we play as Max's comic book hero Rimwall. This is a really weird chapter. Um, there's We're on an alien planet of some sort with these bugs and they're in a war with the Cyclopses. I don't know. The fight of these bugs 
the Cyclops sent their scientists to uh, investigate. And their, the head scientist looks remarkably like Morgan with one eye. So we find out that the lead scientist called Gromna is sacrificing Cyclops babies to these insects. It's really gruesome. In this chapter we get a few cutscenes. One of them is Max with his wife, which I don't know the name of, in a tent somewhere. And he's wearing some Indiana Jones get out. And they talk about Morgan finding a cure for the disease his sister was suffering from. And he also mentions that the Aztecs overcame some kind of plague without conventional medicine. The second one is uh, of Morgan given, giving some injection to a monkey, which gives him pain without killing him. And Max is really opposed to this and they get into a fight. When we defeat Gromna, we get a cutscene of Max having a Eureka moment where he discovers the cure for the disease his sister is suffering and he can't believe that he didn't find it before. And I think this is the part before the starting intro. Then the hive blows up and we're transported to a morgue and we're in one of these drawers, lockers, I don't know exactly what they're called. And when we exit this locker, something horrible happens because there's this lady lying on the table and if we approach her, she suddenly sits up and starts talking to us. Beware, Max. The closer you come to reaching your goal, the more danger you are in. Someone seeks to keep you here with us forever. One who will do anything to keep you from leaving the asylum. In this chapter, we also get a cutscene of Max and Morgan having a fight because Morgan is cutting the funds to the project Max is working on and Max uh, accuses him of just making money and not actually looking for a cure because his drug extends the life of the patients instead of really curing them. Max then eventually backs down because um, Morgan explains that it has nothing to do with that but we know better don't we. There's also this part with the talking tree which I find is really strange. Speak to me, tree, lest your eyes nest with birds. <sighs> Why have you summoned me, stranger? After talking to the tree and completing some puzzles, we find Morgan in this building and he transports away with a teleporter. After fixing the teleporter, we too get transported and we're suddenly an Aztec statue. In this chapter, which is called the Lost Village. We have to talk to a bunch of spirits and get their names uh, from oldest to youngest, of youngest to oldest, I'm not sure, uh, to solve the puzzle. In this level, there's also uh, a god, I forgot his name, standing on a hill, and we have to defeat him. In this chapter, we also have to rescue a little girl that's trapped in a temple. We recruit some wizard guy that thinks he can... Um, distract the god on the hill long enough for us to jump in some hole. When we jump in this hole we get a cutscene of Max being Indiana Jones again and at the end of this cutscene we get to see how he came to the Eureka moment before and he drives off in his car and finds out his brakes are cut and then he crashes which is also the in the intro and, and the beginning of the first chapter. So it's all coming together. Together, you son of a bitch. Suddenly swearing. Cohesion affirmative. Yes. Test cycle downloaded to DVD. Encryptor sequence completed. System shutdown activated. What is the opening cutscene? This break didn't work. Once we complete the puzzle inside the hole, we get up again and we now have the power to destroy this god at the top of the hill. We push him into the lava and fall in ourselves. 
and then we fall through some yeah, bricks yeah. and stuff, turn into Max again, and end up at the bottom of a chimney in his elderly home, I think. His mother is there, and his sister, and this is easily the creepiest part of the game. Let's watch. Oh, my poor baby. You had an awful fall. I'm so glad you've come home. Home? Well, of course, silly. You did want to come home, didn't you? Yes, I, I wanted to... Well, then that's that. Hush now, Max. When you fell down the chimney, you bumped your head, and now you're a little confused, that's all. My... my head hurts. I remember hitting it. That's right, dear. You hit your head on the chimney. Now don't give it another thought. I'll take care of you. Chimney? No, I... I hit it... No, I hit it on... In... My... My... Car? No, of course not, dear. You just bumped... Yes, my car. I was driving and... The brakes... But Max, we've been waiting for you for so long. Don't leave now. We? Who? Why, me and little Sarah, of course. <laughs> well, who else would it be, silly? But... But that's impossible. Sarah is dead. Sarah! Max is home. Max! You're home, you're home! I Notes? missed you! You're alive! My God, Sarah! You're... No! You're dead! Ah! Okay, this might be the scariest thing in the game yet. At the end of the cutscene, Morgan appears like a smudge on the wall. I don't know what to call it. And we found out that he is the one that cut the brakes. And we didn't die in the accident, so now he has to kill us with an injection. We then get to the last chapter of this game, which is called The Gauntlet. We now have the ability to switch between the characters. Grimwall, Sarah, and the Aztec statue, which I forget the name of. And we have to... Um, you know, they all have their abilities. Grimwall is really st strong. He has four arms. The Aztec statue can walk through uh, tough and is heavy. And Sarah, is, her superpower is being really small, I guess. But once we complete all the puzzles, we can transport it to a portal. And we find this Morgan blob, ink blob thing. I don't know what to call it. And he creates a blob... Uh, counterpart to us and we have to play a game of chess something like it once we defeat the chessboard puzzle Morgan gets really mad at us and tries to kill us anyway but we yank on his one of his tentacles which turns out to be the IV that's in our arm and once we yank that out the poison can no longer um, kill us But pulling the IV from our arm apparently also disconnects the heart monitor. And Morgan thinks we're, we're dead and he says it's all over. Then we find out we're still alive and we also say it's all over. And that's the end of the game. So, is Sanitarium still scary? Well, I really love this game and I think it's really fun. But I don't think it's really scary. There are some moments here and there, especially the part with the mother and Sarah, but I just think it's a bit weird instead of scary. I mean, the deformed children are pretty frightening, and the part with the buried corpse you have to dig up is pretty gruesome, but I never got scared. So no, sanitarium is not scary. So there you have it guys, Sanitarium is not scary anymore. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Please consider subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you all next Thursday. Bye bye.